I'm Heva, and today I'm going to take you through a postnatal exercise session. This postnatal session is ideal for those of you who have had C-sections. So we're going to work and focus on bringing the connection back between your brain and this area. So I'd like you to start with your feet about hip distance apart, and just put your hands on your tummy, and just start to rub the lower abdomen a little bit. just to stimulate the receptors and nerves in this area before we start. You're also going to go to the inner thighs and rub the inner thighs a little bit. Rubbing the inner thighs calms down the nervous system and frees up the lower back, which some of you may be feeling from carrying your babies. We're going to go to the back as well and stimulate the lower back. Small, it doesn't have to be really firm or anything, just the skin. Like you're trying to wake up these areas before we start. Okay, now let's do a little bit of mobility. Roll your shoulders back, let your arms hang heavy. And in the first few months of pregnancy, of uh, of de after delivery, usually the neck and shoulder area gets really, really tight. The wrists and the hands start to feel a little bit of pain as well. So we're just going to focus the warm-up on releasing this area. Change direction, circle the opposite way. And go ahead and tilt your head to one side, giving your neck a little bit of a stretch. Center, tilt your head to the opposite side. Center, tilt, center, tilt. And now rotate, so long neck as you turn. Center, long neck, turn, turn, center, and then finish with a figure of eight. Imagine your nose is a pen, and it's going to draw a horizontal figure of eight. or an infinity sign and change direction. And just go slow on this so you don't feel dizzy. Soften your knees. We're going to go ahead and side bend with the whole spine. Drop your head and shoulders forward, not too deep, just like you're folding over your belly button. Go all the way to the opposite side and back up again. Inhale, we go to the side. Exhale, drop your head and shoulders forward. Go all the way to the side and back up again. And you want to feel this just about where you're feeling a bit sore or tight. And you may not do, I'm um, generalizing symptoms after delivery. And it's a good time to start working out when you feel ready, especially if it was a C-section delivery, don't be in a rush to get back to exercising. You will know when you're ready, when your body's ready. Inhale, exhale. And just trust the intelligence of your body to let you know what and when you're ready to start. So let's go ahead and bend the knees now. And you're going to press your hands on the top of your hip bones and press the pelvis down and away from you. And start to do a few pelvic tilts. So tilt forward and back while you're actively pressing down. This feeling of pushing the pelvis down will give you a little bit of space in the lower back where it's feeling compressed. So push the hips down and then move your pelvis back and forth and it should feel quite freeing on the lower back. It should feel quite nice, like you're creating space and traction in your spine. Now do little circles, again pressing with your hands down, so you really feel like you can disassociate your pelvis, which is here, from your back and from your legs. Legs shouldn't move at all. Change direction. And what happens with pregnancy is this whole section gets glued together and starts to move as one. 
So by isolating them again and reorganizing this part of your body, you should feel like you're able to move your pelvis without your legs, you're able to move your lower back without your legs and pelvis either. And stretch. Now go ahead and bend one knee. You may need to hold on to the wall for this and just release your leg from the pelvis. So you're moving your leg but your pelvis shouldn't move at all. If you're confused about what your pelvis is, think of it as your bikini bottom or your underwear. That's your pelvic bone, the whole bowl. You don't want that to move at all. You don't want this to start lifting. Just want to feel the leg in its own socket. Then change. Lift the other leg. Start to swing side to side. Gentle connection in your core. And relax. The last thing before we get to the floor is a nerve stretch that will help you if you've been carrying the baby a lot and you're starting to feel strain here. So go ahead and extend your wrist and spread your fingers apart. Pull your ear to the opposite shoulder and depress this shoulder so you feel a bit of nerve tension running down the arm and into these three fingers. Once you're there, do little baby circles, keeping the shoulder depressed. And it should feel like a bit of tingling, maybe change direction. Think of it as flossing the nerve so that all the muscles that this nerve innervates become active and stronger after you've flossed it. Get a stronger connection between your brain and those muscles. Let's go to the other side now. So extend your wrist, spread your fingers apart, depress your shoulder and baby circles. The details matter here. If your shoulder starts to lift, you're not going to feel anything. And you may feel it on one side more than the other. That's totally normal. Change direction. And relax. Okay, let's go ahead and have a seat. Now you could sit on the floor if it's comfortable to sit cross-legged. Alternatively, if you're feeling a little bit slouch, just sit on a chair with your legs on either side so you're facing the back of the chair and your legs are open. Now, while you're sitting down, whether you're on a chair or on the floor, just go ahead and move the bottom cheeks out of the way so that you're feeling your two sitting bones on the ground. And if you think about it, you can feel your two sitting bones on the ground, right? You can feel, you can feel your pubic bone, but you know it's at the front and at the back you've got the tailbone. So I want you to visualize this diamond shape of bones that you're sitting on and think of the sheet covering these four points or linking these four points together. That's your pelvic floor. So I'd like you to think of bringing those four corners towards each other as you breathe out. Almost like it's a handkerchief. You're pulling the four corners of the handkerchief in and then zipping up, lifting as if you're stopping yourself from urinating, from going to the bathroom. And then as you inhale, just release it back down again. As you exhale, draw the four corners in and contract that muscle. And as you inhale, relax the muscle again into its natural resting state. As you breathe out, draw in and lift. And breathe in to release. Some of you, if you are doing this and you've had a natural birth or delivery, um, this may feel a little bit weak right now. Don't worry, as long as your brain is thinking about this area, eventually you will feel the muscle get stronger. So, let's get a little bit more specific. I hope you know which muscle I'm talking about now, and I hope you're not tensing the rest of your body. This is happening inside your body. Nothing on the outside should be happening at all. So, we're gonna go ahead and imagine that our pelvic floor is a lift in a 10, 10 floor building. So we're going to go all the way up to the 10th floor, zip up through the lift, lift, hold it at the maximum, let people out of the lift, and then take it down. And then again, we're going to go all the way up to the 10th floor of the building, hold, and let people out and take it down. And again, lift all the way up to the 10th floor, hold, and take it down. Now see if you can go just to fifth floor. See if you have that control. So we go up to fifth. Take it down. Fifth again. Take it down. 
go up to third floor, take it down, third, third sometimes can be quite challenging to find, but it's again fine tuning that link between your pelvic floor and your brain. There's a lot of debate as to whether this, this kind of exercise is good for you or not good for you, but one thing the research all agrees on is that the stronger your brain-body connection between your pelvic floor and your brain and what it's telling it to do, the healthier it is for you. So playing around with different levels of contraction is a very good brain-body exercise. Okay. Now go all the way up to the 10th floor again and hold it up and pulse up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and relax. And again, zip up one, two, three, up four, five, six, seven, eight, and relax. Okay? Throughout the rest of the session, I'd like you to bring awareness to this muscle, to the pelvic floor, and maybe on some of the exercises, I'm going to ask you to go third floor. Some of, you, some of them, I'm going to ask you to go tenth floor. Okay, let's go ahead and lie down on the back now. Roll down slowly. Take your arms out 45 degree, and squeeze your feet and your knees together. So as you breathe out, you're going to send your legs over to one side, and inhale, come back to center. As you exhale, send your legs over to the other side. And inhale, come back to center. And breathe out. Inhale, center. Breathe out. Stacking your feet, rolling them one on top of the other. And center. Separate your feet now so they're at the edges of the mat. Send your knees down to one side as you exhale. Inhale, center. Exhale, send your knees to the other side and center. This exercise, we're just mobilizing the spine before we start with the direct core work and warming up the spine. One more on each side. Okay. Bring your feet about hip distance apart again. As you exhale, lift up to the third floor as you imprint your lower back to the mat. Inhale, come back to neutral. Now an imprint position is literally just imprinting the lower back on the mat as you lift your pubic bone. Inhale, release to neutral. Exhale, imprint. Inhale to release to neutral. And you really want to bring awareness to the lower abdominal area as you do the imprint. Hold the imprint position now. Keep the contraction here. Lift one leg up to tabletop. Deepen the imprint and lift the other leg up to tabletop as well. And as you exhale now, you're going to arc one leg down towards the floor, keeping the abdomen really compressed. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, arc the other leg. Inhale, come back to center. Now you're only going to go as low as your lower back can stay in imprint and you don't see that your tummy muscles are starting to dome or bulge upwards. So you need to feel, especially after, after delivering, you need to feel that hollow feeling like your abdominals are joining together, that you're getting the muscle to unite and connect to the deep core muscles. So the session is not going to be forced, it's not going to be really tough, but you're working those deep deep layer core that surround your spine and act like a corset. And that's what you want to be feeling when you do these, that corset feeling. So every time you're going to lower your leg now, I want you to think of zipping up to the 10th floor. Inhale, come back. Exhale, 10th floor, arc the leg down. Inhale, come back. Exhale, arc the leg down. Inhale, come back. And you can leave your hands on your tummy just to increase awareness there and come back. Let's do four more. Breathe out. And lift. Exhale. Lift. Two more. Relax. Take the legs down one at a time. 
is back to neutral, go to your belly button and go about two centimeters on either side of the belly button and I'd like you to dig really deep with your fingers and start to massage this area. Little baby circles deep. Again, this is going to stimulate and wake up those lower abdominal muscles. It's all one muscle, but the lower part of the, of the core muscles. Since those are the ones that are affected in a C-section delivery. So it should, it, well, it may feel a little bit tender, this area. But keep massaging, keep circling until it feels a little less tender. And if it doesn't feel tender, that's okay. And relax. Okay, moving on to the next core one. We're going to take ourselves to an imprint position again. Lift one leg up to tabletop. Deepen the imprint connection. Lift the other leg up to tabletop as well. This time we're going to do one leg stretch. So as you exhale, straighten the leg away. It's not arcing down anymore. It's reaching away. Inhale to come back. Exhale, stretch the other leg away. Inhale, come back. And because this is very similar to the exercise we just did, I'm going to go ahead and add some arms. Feel free to add this or not. It's up to you. But don't lose focus in your core. As you stretch your right leg, your left arm is going to go overhead. Inhale, they're going to come back to meet each other. Exhale, reach the right arm overhead, your left leg stretches, and inhale, they come back. So breathe out to reach. Inhale to return. Breathe out to reach, keeping the bra strap on the mat the whole time. And all I want you to think about is that corset. And every time your leg reaches away and the arm reaches back, think about zipping up to the 10th floor again through the pelvic floor muscles. Let's go one more time on each side. Relax, hug your knees into your chest. Okay, going into double leg stretch, but we're keeping the head and shoulders down for all of these exercises. So you may have done them before when you were before the pregnancy with the head and shoulders up, but we're gonna stay down for this workout. So as you exhale, see if you can push your knees away. They don't have to straighten fully. The arms are gonna go overhead. Inhale, you're gonna circle your arms and hug the knees back in. If you're feeling strong enough to keep the imprint and keep the abdomen compressed, feel free to straighten the legs. Inhale, circle the arms and hug the knees back in. But don't go so low like this that you start to feel your abs bulging and your back arching. Keep everything hollow and feeling that inner abdominal pressure, that corset feeling that we talked about. And again, exhale, reach the legs away, arms overhead. Inhale, circle round. Let's do five more. Breathe out, reach. Inhale, circle round. Breathe out, reach four. Inhale, circle and hug. Exhale, three. Circle and hug. Two more. Breathe out and circle. Last time, exhale, reach and rest. Well done. Okay, go ahead now and roll up to sitting. And you can roll over on your side to sit up. And we're going to straighten the legs and we're going to start to do part of the roll up. So stretch forward, draw the navel in towards the spine. And as you exhale, think of sitting back onto your back pockets, rolling back, rounding the spine and only go about halfway. And then inhale, come forward again over the legs. And again, breathe out, relax your shoulders, go halfway. Inhale to come forward. Sometimes with pregnancy, the lower back gets really hollow. So now is a chance to kind of curve it round again. And if it was really hollow, you may feel like you're getting more curve in your spine by bending your knees. And you may need to hold the backs of your thighs if you're feeling particularly weak in the core. So feel free to grab the back of your thighs and just roll back off your sitting bones onto your back pockets and then up again. Let's go ahead and add the pelvic floor, but to the third floor this time only. Inhale, lengthen. 
Exhale, third floor, lift on the pelvic floor and slowly rolling back. Inhale, grow through the top of your ears. Let's do a few more. So the stronger you're feeling, the more connected you're feeling, the further back you can go and the arms can actually let go of the legs. And eventually, after a few, maybe one or two months, you may feel up for even doing the full roll up. We go all the way to the floor and back up. Only do this version if you do feel like you're able to do it with no speed bumps, with no momentum, and no swing. Because you need to bring your back, your spine back to its full mobility that you used to have before the pregnancy. And everybody's different, so you may feel ready from the beginning. Okay, let's go ahead and lie down on the side now. So we're going to make one long line. You're going to straighten your legs and make sure that your legs are not too far back. They're slightly forward so that if you look down and flex your feet, you should be able to see your toes. Then line up your neck in line with the spine. Make sure your hip bones are stacked, core gently connected, and imagine there's ice cold water running underneath your bottom waist. So we're going to bring awareness back to the lower abdominals and we're going to lift the top leg. And as you lift your top leg, you're going to think about lifting your pelvic floor up to the third floor again. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Breathe out, lift. And lower. And as you lift the leg, feel like it's getting longer and longer. We go four more, four, exhale, three, two, and hold. Now slow baby circles, one, two, trying to keep the hip bones really stacked. Imagine you've got a drink here that you don't want to spill and you're still trying to lift through the bottom waist. Change direction, circle the other way, keeping the awareness of this lower abdominal area in particular. Hold, keep the leg lifted, bring the bottom leg up to meet the top leg. You're going to squeeze your legs together and then they come down. So inhale, the top leg lifts, exhale, the bottom leg comes up to meet the top leg and they both rest. Try not to put your hand too firmly on the ground. You're aiming eventually to do all this with the arm by your side. So you could have just maybe one finger on the ground or a few. Lift, squeeze, lower them both. Lift, squeeze, lower them both. You're working for length on this one. Keeping the connection in your core throughout, which is so important right now. Last one of these, both legs lifting at the same time. Breathe out, lift and lower. And you can feel a bit like your lower leg is carrying your top leg up. Keep the connection strong. The inner thighs squeezing together should help you remember that pelvic floor contraction. And hold it now up. Reach both arms overhead, keep the ribs heavy. See if you can balance and start to kick your legs small. See if you can balance while you do little kicks. Squeeze your legs together, little claps with the feet. Squeeze and relax. Well done. Okay. So go ahead and come up to sitting now, and we're going to go ahead and do the other side. So again, make sure you're lying down long. You can see your feet when the legs are slightly forward. And this nice neutral spine connected to the lower abdominal area, and you're going to lift and lower. And every time you lift your leg, think about drawing the pelvic floor up, the third notch, third, third floor on the lift. And don't think of lifting the leg high, just think of making the leg long. Long and away from the opposite end, which is the crown of your head. 
hold the leg now and start to circle. One, two, you want smooth circles. Three, four, and five. Change direction. One, two, three, four, five. Hold the leg, bring the bottom leg up to meet the top leg, squeeze them together and then they both come down. Inhale, lift the top leg up. Exhale, squeeze the legs together, really energized, like there's a magnet between your legs. And if your core muscles were not connected in this exercise, your legs will start to drift back behind you. So make sure that you are feeling that the legs are still a little bit forward, where you could see them if you look down. Now both legs lifting and lowering together, squeeze, let the connection between the inner thighs transfer up to your pelvic floor. Should have a stronger connection in your pelvic floor when you breathe out. Let's do five more lifts like this, five and four, exhale three, and two, and hold. Balance now, take the arm up and overhead, and see if you can do little kickings with the legs, keeping your hip bones stacked, and this is all coming from your core now. This is all stabilizing. Squeeze your legs together again, little claps. Clap, clap, clap with the feet, and squeeze and relax. Well done. Let's go ahead and roll over now to our plank position. So now we're going to do the plank. Depending on your energy and how much connection you feel in your lower abdominals is whether you're going to do the half plank or the full plank. So if you're still feeling quite weak, you're going to stick to knees down, lift your bottom and make sure that your arm is vertical. They're not here. So it's directly underneath your shoulders. You're going to drop the tailbone and imagine you're imprinting your lower back along the ceiling. And really just think of the corset now. Lifting through the lower abdominals and joining from the sides. If you're feeling a little bit more energy, feel free to straighten the legs as you breathe out. And as you breathe in, bend them again. Stretch your legs and bend. You, what you don't want is this. You don't want to lift your bottom high. Stay low and just stretch and bend or hold for a few breaths if you're able to. Just making sure you're not letting things hang. You're letting all, you're lifting against gravity, trying to really, really hold the abdominals in. Slow breathing. Let's hold for another five counts. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Take a child's pose stretch. Stretch your back out. Okay, come to all fours. Bring your wrists directly underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips, and start to do some circles. Just going around and around. This exercise is mobilizing your wrists and making them a little bit stronger because you, your baby's just going to get heavier and you do need to uh, strengthen these small forearm muscles and wrists, most of us do, and then change direction, circle around again. And we're going to do one more set of plank, either with the knees hovering just above the ground if you're feeling a bit weak still, or go ahead and send your knees further back. We exhale, stretch, inhale, bend. But now you're strengthening the wrist. So a lot of women don't like to put load on their wrists because they feel like 
it's get it's getting compressed the stronger you feel the more you're going to lift away from that joint space and if you're on a thick mat like this one it does feel better with your hands on the ground so go ahead and put your ground, uh, hands on the floor if, if it feels better so either curl your toes and just lift your knees to hover above the ground and hold whenever you need a break just take it down or send your knees further back and then go ahead and straighten the legs and hold again just Think about the corset. Visualize, visualize your muscles just joining and coming close to your belly button. All wrapping around that one point. Bring feeling to the lower abdominals by just thinking about this area. There's nothing stronger than visualizing. Go five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Sit back, roll your wrists around just to release that. Change direction. And we're gonna finish with a pigeon stretch that's quite freeing at the sacroiliac joint in the lower back. And if you're getting any trouble or tension there, this one is very, very comforting. So take your knee open and just slide your leg back and then go ahead and sink into the stretch in your elbows so that you're feeling a stretch here in the bottom. For some of you, if this feels uncomfortable, just go ahead and while you're standing, find a, a counter or a, a table that's not so high and put your leg over it and open the knee and then just rest in that position. And you'll feel, although the stretch is here in the bottom, that this area in the lower back where it meets the sacrum feels a lot more comfortable by the end. Okay, let's switch sides. So bring the other knee, open it, slide your leg back, Make sure you feel like you're bang in the middle, and then come down on your elbows. And just breathe in this position. Let's go ahead and come back up again. Curl the toes, lift your bottom to a downward dog stretch from yoga. Send your heels down towards the floor, send your bottom high towards the ceiling. And send your chest close to your thigh, so you're trying to create this sharp V shape with your whole body. And then walk your hands towards your feet, bending your knees as you get to the Feet, hang your head, bend your knees a little bit more, drop your tailbone and slowly roll all the way back up again to standing. And then once you reach the top, you're going to do a fascial stretch. You're going to take your right leg, I'm mirroring you, so you take your right leg behind you and back, spread your fingers, spread them apart and reach over to the side. Sometimes you just need a good stretch from those sleepless nights and carrying during the day. Release. Let's go to the other side. Left leg goes back. Spread the fingers. Reach. And relax. Thank you very much for taking the time to do this workout, and I hope you have a happy, healthy recovery.